Right on! Everyone, thank you very much. Welcome to Bar 1830. Once yes, again, yes. you guys are a lovely audience. I can see most of you. Yes, indeed. Well, we're here again for one more episode. Have some more fun. Well, oh, <laughs> that's okay. We'll fix all that shit in post-production. Don't you worry. Go to the end. Let's Including my like. face. This will all be different. Do you want to do the intro again? No. No, don't do the intro. I again. think we, I think, I think our fans have had back. enough of no, the what intro. What we got to do next time is work out the outro of the intro. That's what we need to work on. Absolutely, actually. it was the end that this was the problem. This is for you, Ooh. and this is how we start another episode of Thirty Nine Drunken Cheers. Disorderlies. So Cheers to Thirty Nine Drunken Cheers. Disorderlies. Raise them up. Raise them up. Cheers. If you uh, can drink them, raise them. Give it up to uh, eighteen thirty bar here for hosting the shindig again. It's thank a you. beautiful thank you. Monday night. Thank you very much, eighteen thirty. It's so nice in here. Classy. Night. Out there, we can We tell. keep saying that because we're actually blown away. Then, yeah. I mean, you should have seen half the apartments I lived in. There's, there's a reason why I'm like, wow, what the hell is this? It's like a hotel. This place blows the roof off. That's why we know really what it's nice like nice hotel that someone else can afford that I can't. And if you're listening to this in podcast form right now and you don't know what we're talking about, you got to follow us on Instagram at right. 39DD Show. You see what I did there, right there? Huh? You, did that. you can check plug. I can slip plug. in those they plugs. They can check out pictures of the place. Of this place? Wow. Or Bob. That's you amazing. follow along with Because everyone wants to see more pictures of me. I mean, I know I do. Apparently, people don't think you're real. You know what? I don't think I'm real half the time, which is cool. Right. It works out. Are we all it real? works out. We're on the same page. Right. You know what I mean? All right. So I guess I'll just jump right in like I usually do, like both feet off the oh dock here. God. Buckle um, up. Jump right in. You guys know what you're in for? I lo- This is my most... I always cut your beginning of your story off because I'm so pumped to fucking He is. He's overexcited. Right he's like, he's blowing his load a bit early on this one. Like, That's okay. We, go. we got you, Lars. Okay. We're here. I'm ready. In. You ready? You buckled in? Blow my mind. Ooh. All right. So this story is called The All Night Traveling Flea Circus. Let me write that down. Of course it is. The and All Night, Night Traveling, Traveling Flea, Flea Circus. Circus. And I, you have to thank my father for that because that was literally the quote he gave, which I will illustrate as the story continues. So as most of these stories begin, you know, a Friday night, early in the afternoon, we decide it's a good idea to smoke a whole shitload of pot, and then buy as much liquor as we can afford on our, like, you know, punk rocker's pension, which Brilliant. is basically, like... Great idea. The nickels Actually, and dimes you putting, can scrape out of the couch. Putting those two things together did take some thought. It wasn't absolutely hand absolutely. in hand. So no, no, totally. Well done. What are you going to do with that money? So Invest in your you know, education? You, you waste, you wa- no, of course not. You waste your entire afternoon well into the evening getting trashed and realize you've just run out of one or the other. In this case, it happened to be pot that we were out of. So we decided to travel, you know... A mile and a half, two miles, three miles, ten miles, who knows. When guys like, just over here, we're going to see my pal. And you know how that turns into just over here. And you start walking, and an hour goes by. Oh, man, it's just up here. A little further. We'll be there, man. Two hours go by. You're still wasted. You're traveling up the street. Just just screwed. Completely fucked up. Right? Well, my friends and I saw another group of gentlemen coming down the road on the opposite side of the street. And they were looking over at us, staggering, wasted up the street, and decided they were, you know, going to make fun of us because of our dress. Mm. You know, we're punk rocker guys, you know, sort of dirty clothing. So these dudes were like, oh, look at the queers on the other side of the street over there. (laughs) But we could hear them yelling, which is odd because you'd think a bunch of big dudes on one side of the street, if they weren't sure they were going to get into a fight, would be a little quieter. I don't know. Well, but what were they yelling from? What kind of attire? What were they they, they dressed? Like, you know, sort of jock dudes in the beaches. I mean, I grew up in the East End. I don't know if you know what it was like in the East End in the 90s, but there was just no real diversity of individuals. It was like, you know, you had, you had like dudes in khakis with ball caps mm-hmm. who were huge assholes to everybody all the time. Fucking jocks versus the punk rocks, man. Pretty Every much. Time. Tales <laughs> all this time. Yeah, it really is. It's tales <laughs> all this time. And it's stupidly stereotypical, but I mean, it's just exactly right how time. it goes. Yeah. So I start, I start calling these guys out, and I'm, I'm the drunkest of my friends at the time. And my friend's like, no, 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 come on. There's a bunch of these guys over there. Just chill out, chill out, chill out. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. No, you're talking shit about us and blah, blah, blah. And I won't let it go. And it's one of those times when I, I knew I could win the fight. Right? I'm like, yeah, there's six of them. And I know my friends are not going to help me very much in this one. But 
I- I'm going to go for it anyway. I got this. I got this. So I start screaming insults, and these, these, these four or five guys come across the street. And, you know, the guys I was with, I guess I have to describe them for you to fully understand what I'm talking about. My best friend, Rich, is, is about six feet maybe, 5'11", weighs maybe 110 pounds soaking wet. Oh, no. And my buddy Nick is about same height, maybe a little skinnier. Both these guys are liquored up, and they got the balls. They're ready for the fight. Like they want it, they're gonna go, but there's really no chance of that happening. You know what I mean? Like they have any experience whatsoever? They just kind of sort of roaring, sort of. You but guys kind of scratch, sort right? of a little you bit, yeah. Scrap. But I mean, like being that drunk and also being that small, I basically picked a fight they couldn't win and decided I'm gonna I'm gonna win it myself. <laughs> so these guys start they start going with me, and I'm like you know pulling my Superman moves out. Like I, I've got this, and it's actually for a moment like pretty impressive. What are some of your moves? You have well, some go-to moves? Yeah, it's nothing, nothing particular, but anyway, I, I punched the one guy so hard that he sort of spun around and fell down. But I was up on uh, one foot. The old spin and fall. But I, you know, I was visual. totally, this is not like professional. I was like drunk as fuck. So <laughs> I'm up on one foot way <laughs> off drunken, balance. Drunken fist. And so I grabbed this other guy and I decided I'm going to like try and hyper knee bash him in the face, right? So I pulled his head down and I drive the knee up, but I'm still like off balance. And so he goes flying over there, but I fall over. And land on one of these little picket fences that ropes off a lawn, right? Oh, God. Anyway, I knock myself out. <laughs> like, because my, you know, I'm like, again, I'm like, oh, you can! I just kind of, like, fall down on this little say, fence. It's been a Mortal Kombat, like, Street yeah. Fighter going and, on. You know, and I go right through this fence and knock myself out. And these guys decide, well, we got our chance. We're going to apply, like, running shoes to the back of this guy's head and, and you know, kick the shit out of him. We can. So I kind of sort of turtle half asleep. And these guys are... <laughs> just laying running shoes across the back of head. I must have been kicked 50 or 60 times. But the problem is, this is the same fucking gear that they released the, like, super thick Air Jordan, like, double spring, like, safety shoes. <laughs> oh, my right? God, that's hilarious. So when you're stepping and stomping on someone and you're, like, orthopedic happy wear, really, like, the reason people wear, like, you know, combat boots in combat is not just to protect your feet from landmines. It's so when you kick something, they notice. Right, but if you're wearing like <laughs> literally like pads for your feet, that you could, you know, the pillows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you put on like giant fluffy slippers, and now you're going. <laughs> <laughs> People are pillowing so you. They, they were just giving you like a, a a very like comfortable scalp massage. Well, no, I was feet. I was I mean I was bruised. I was bruised, but the thing is, for the amount of kicks that I took, and there's a woman in her apartment calling the police, watching these guys like rain blows down, and it looks like they're just killing this guy in the street. Ah, right. Well. My one friend who, who, who tries to engage comes running in. He has a, his chain on his wallet, right? So he's going to whip his wallet chain out and, like, show these fuckers, like, you know, classic punk rock combat. Oh, comes the chain. Right. Problem is... What, what's on the chain? We don't know, right? Well, no, it's, it's like his wallet the attached to the chain. He's right. going to whip them with the chain. The problem is he leads with the wallet end, <laughs> not with the clip end. And so the, the centrifugal force pulls the chain out of his hand, and he basically just throws his wallet <laughs> at this guy. <laughs> Right? So I see my, my rescuer with, with, with we, and his wallet goes bing off the back of this dude who looks over and is like, what the fuck was that? And he's like, that's all he's got. Like, the chain's gone. Wallet's gone. So he goes, Whoo! and throws his dukes up. And the guy walks over and just pushes him onto the lawn like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Stay out of this. We're going to kick this guy to death with our, with our, with our slippers. Did, we, we've did, got this. Did the guy keep his wallet? No. It bounced off like under some parked car. I don't even know what hit him. I'm sure the guy had no idea there was just an attempted walleting. Like, he had no clue what hit him. He's like, something went path off my back in the middle of this fight. And I looked around, and there was nothing there. Except the little skinny guy going. <laughs> right? My other friend doesn't, Rich, my best friend doesn't even bother. He knows. He knows this whole fighting thing is just not going to work. So he tells him the one simple truth. He's like, you haven't heard him yet. He fell down. <laughs> and I think he knocked himself out. But he's going to wake up. <laughs> and it's going to happen soon. And you guys should probably go. And the one oh guy who got God. hit and the other guy who got kicked before I haul you can myself into the fence <laughs> are both going, yeah, guys, we should probably go. The one guy's head's starting to swell up like this. And the other guy can't. He's like, oh, well, yeah, we should go. I just got kicked a little bit. And I'm, uh. The other four guys are like, no, no, we got this. <laughs> like more pillow kicking right for a while. And sure enough, I go, <laughs> 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 I look, I see his feet. I'm like, feet. Uh. 
And I started reaching up, trying to drag myself up the guys that are pathing away at these little oh slipper feet. God. And that's when the other four guys realized, you know, that skinny dude wasn't joking. I'm like, this dude's waking up. And we didn't hurt him at all. Like, he fell down and went to sleep because he's drunk. He's going to get back up. Something's going to happen. So they bolt into this ravine off of Kingston Road and take off. This is a big series of ravines that runs from, like, you know, the Danforth all the way to Lake Shore and, like, beyond. You know what I mean? So these guys, these guys bolt in this ravine. You know you're in a fucked up situation where you got to run into a ravine like, to get away from yeah, something. Yeah, let's escape like, and go into the ravine. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, into the ravine. That's yeah. never a good thing to say. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I sort of I wake up. I'm looking around like all groggy. I'm like, where do these fucking guys go? Where do they go? And buddy, my buddy, they look at each other. And they're both like, hey, we're spent. We're done. We're not doing this. They're like, yeah, they jumped into a cab and they fucked off, man. They're gone. Like, they're nowhere nearby. You couldn't possibly catch them. They're not around here at all. They're gone. <laughs> like, don't try running through the ravine or anything. They're not there. Like, don't worry. This, none of this is not going to happen. As he points towards the ravine, don't go. I swear, like, I, swear they're, they're, I swear they're not down there. <laughs> but luckily for them, like I said, I was mashed. And I'd already fallen down and gone to sleep once. So I was like, okay, okay. I believe you, but I'm still super angry. So I start yelling. I started yelling like, "You fucking bastards! If I find you, I'm going to kill you!" Just top my into lungs. the ether. Like just, yeah, moment, just roaring into the, into the night, right? It's like that that wide shot where you see the village and then birds come out of the forest. Yeah, exactly. And, like, mothers. Well, spirits, lights so. start going on in the apartment building across the street. My friend's like, "Guy, we got to we got to get out of here. Like, what the fuck are you doing? We got to go." What did, what did you yell again? Say it again. Oh, I'm like, "If I find you, I'm going to kill you!" <laughs> and, and the thing is, it's so loud and it's so roaring. Like, I'm not gonna be pretty loud when I want to. That I know now, knowing that these guys had just run into the ravine like 200 yards behind me, they, they could all obviously hear me. <laughs> so they're running through the bushes in the middle of the night like, oh, shit, there's a giant guy out there. If I find you, I'm going to kill you. And they're like, oh, shit. Like, shh, bushes in the face. You know, we paffed him for a while. Now he's going to kill us, right? <laughs> so <laughs> You getting this, animators? That's so, what we're doing right now. We're, so we're we carry on. We, we, we carry on and to, to our destination of, of, you know, Buddy's pot dealer. 10 million miles away. <laughs> this is all in the journey for pot, by yeah, the way. Yeah, literally. We just wanted to go and smoke some dope, man. And they say dope never hurt anybody, and it didn't. Stupidity hurt people. And it, was, it, you know, it was the lack of dope, because you had no dope. So, uh, all of a sudden, this, this ambulance pulls up along behind us as we're walking along, right? Now, I don't realize this, but I split my face open on this little fence when I landed on it, and I've been bleeding for a while. What a self destruction <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was completely ridiculously one-sided me hurting myself and then being mad about it and <laughs> trying while trying to fight six so these medics show up and they're like oh excuse me we had this we had this 911 call there's some, like some incident here with like violence and stuff and you look like you might be injured sir and i'm like i'm like i'm fine go away it's like my, my face is really caked in blood I'm like i'm fine just fine and the police show up with you know, right after the ambulance they're like no oh, you don't look right. like you're fine we should have a chat and i was working as a mall security guard at the time <laughs> And I don't know how I thought this was going to defend me from prosecution, but I whip out, like, my mall security license, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't need your shit. I'm a security <laughs> guard. And my friends are like, we just, yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's a little upset. Like, he fell down. and He fell and hit his head. Yeah, he fell down and hurt himself. Like, he's fine. Like, well, do you need to ride to the hospital, sir, to get medically checked out? I'm like, no, I think I'm fine. I've walked this far. I haven't died. I think I'm cool. Like, it's, it's good. Give me some wet naps. I'll be on my way. And the guy's like, well... Was there an altercation of some kind? And my friends are like, no, and no. And I'm like, no. And they're like, well, we have like 35 witnesses in this apartment building across the street down there that disagree with you. So what's up? What happened? I'm like, these guys called us queer and tried to fight us. They're totally intolerant. We had no choice. We had to fight back. And the cop's like, that sounds rehearsed. And I'm like, no, it just makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right? So they let us go. I mean, he's like, yeah, here's some wet naps, like, beat it fuckos like you don't have a concussion there's no stitches required you fell on a fence and like no one's actually lying in the street hurt anymore you're just yelling at people and you're a security guard so carry on you know and <laughs> we, we get to my, my, my buddy's you know, dealer's place and his mom opens the back door because you know that's how it always works right you lock on some shady door and some middle-aged woman uh, Johnny yeah he's in the basement yeah I'll, I'll get him you know what I mean so they knock on the door door open she's like what the fuck happened to your face <laughs> <laughs> You listening, Tarantino? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I fell on a fence, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I got home, and apparently the police had taken my information. They called my mother and had been like, yeah, your son apparently got kicked in the head like 56 times and blah, blah, blah. So I, I walk in all wasted like 4 o'clock in the morning, like expecting just to go straight to bed. Like, yeah, this is a stupid night. I was retarded. Like, let's just end this. 
and she flips out. She's like, you have to go to the emergency room. You might have a concussion. Like, we are not sitting in this house where you, like, look at you and blah. I'm like, I fell on a fence, Mom. Like, you stabbed me in the face. Just a fence. Right? No big deal. No fence stabbing. No big deal. She's like, no, you are going to the emergency room. So I spent seven and a half hours in the emergency room to get told you don't have a concussion and you're really drunk. And I'm like, I could have answered both of those on my <laughs> own. Right? That's the worst part of the story, for sure. And so the reason the story is called The All Night Traveling Flea Circus is like, my dad, who was, my mom and dad were separated. When I got to my dad's place the next week, he'd heard the whole story from my mom in irate tones over the phone. And so she's like, you sit this boy down and you straighten this shit out. Like if he's going to be wandering all night fucking wasted. So he goes, son, if you're going to be the protectorate of the All Night Traveling Flea Circus, at least... Be sober enough to fight. <laughs> oh. And, uh, you know, he's, you have to understand, my dad's, my dad's like one of my heroes. He's a complete pacifist. He does not fight. He's totally chills. He's the carpenter. Yeah, 100% relaxed. But when he, when he has wisdom about how to survive on the street, he's not joking. He's like, seriously, you're just retarded. Like, you were way too drunk. I think maybe it's time you drank a little bit less and we're a little more responsible. But the way, he's put, the way he put it was just so perfect. If you're going to be the protector of the all-night traveling flea circus, <laughs> at least be sober enough to fight. And I was like, that's and, hilarious. And the key word there, sober enough. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't say abstinence is best. He was just like, you know, somewhere down the line, this was obviously out of control and you knew it. You know what I mean? And yet we're still here with your mother calling me on the phone being like, concussion! And like, and, uh, Hey, but so. like radio, you do it to yourself, right? Absolutely. Like, like those do. other guys. Absolutely you do. So, yeah. I mean, those are the lessons. When you're going to pick a fight, remember. Even if you think you're protecting other people. Like, I picked a fight for the three of us. I was like, I got this. <laughs> I got this whole fight. And meanwhile, the fight was me and a small picket fence. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then my, like, temper and random neighbors and not going to prison, right? Like, that was great. Like, that was the, the real fight was against my own ignorance at that point. You know? And... The, the way my father burnt that one down, I, I always thought about that later under stupid circumstances. I'd be like, was I sober enough to fight? And I was like, yes, I was. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, and I know that's not the moral of the story I was supposed to get out of that. Like, I really know that wasn't it. Like, I'm sure there was more meaning to it than that. But that's the meaning that in the moment I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm sober enough. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am. Because you were like, I've been way drunker and fought than this, right? right. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, how else do you judge <laughs> sober enough? close to the Come on. Think about I've sober been. enough. Where does sober enough come from? Where, when is, that, where is that line? Exactly. Because I'll tell you this right now. I'll tell you this. Like, Health Canada and their regulations on what is binge drinking and what is sober and what is not, most people who walk out of most bars in most places in most towns will not pass any of those tests ever. You have more than a drink and a half. You're not sober by most circumstances. Right, but even I, if you're okay, that's true. But again, being a giant, I know this. I happen to be off the normal chart, so it's like if you're 450 pounds and six foot four or something like that, that's the biggest that people get. And for a while, I was like 475 pounds and like six foot ten. You were bigger than people. Yeah, so they're like, <laughs> well, how much drinking have you done? And I'm like, a lot. And they're like, well, what do you mean a lot? Like how many ounces of liquor? I'm like, wow, you count that? <laughs> um, liters? How many liters? It was like how it wasn't an entire bottle, but it wasn't how, not an entire how bottle. How we start measuring your alcohol intake? That would be interesting. Well, now I'm much much more responsible and chilled out. Like it's like cases and bottles. Like you know, you just and you drink Tall Boys. It's easier that way because it's like a, I had ten of those. There were ten, <laughs> right? And that you know, you can count the cans and be like, that's exactly that's. That's how drunk I am. <laughs> Ten cans drunk, right? I just throw the empties at them. Have, yeah. you, ever, have you ever done like uh like I know some people do like home brews, right? Or like that they do like get kegs or whatever. Like if you ever uh, I have a great store at home brew. <laughs> my my roommate, my first roommate, he tried to make beer at home because you got one of these kits off the internet, right? Like, you too can make beer. We fucking swear. It hasn't taken hundreds of years of innovation to come up with this. No, no, no. You, drunken idiots, can do it in your basement. We swear. <laughs> the got a bathtub in a bucket? <laughs> the most <beer. laughs> Exactly. The most You're almost there, there the right? The most what they're talking about. Yeah. So he made, this, he made this beer and it was basically black. It was this stout of some kind and it was black and it had like, it looked like chutney floating in it. Like it was this, this gristle. You know what I mean? Anyway. I drank it. We ended up naming it Zool. I, I definitely drink it. And the reason we named it Zool is because people would ask us, do you have any beer? 
and be like, there is no beer. Only Zool. Only Zool. And they'd be like, oh, we'll try some of that. I'm like, mm -hmm, only once. And you know what I mean? And you pour them like, a, you know, like a half pint glass, like a rock glass. And just like, and they see the gristle in it and the stuff. They're like, what is this? I'm like, oh, uh, it's a thick stout. It's like it's, drinking it actually killed Dana. Yeah, it's exactly. It's thick. Like, woo. Is there meat in my beer? <laughs> exactly. It, it moved. I think it moved. My drink moved. <laughs> so there were times. There were times when we had literally drank everything else in the house, including. I mean, it's the reason I can't even see creme de menthe anymore. One night we drank everything in the house. Then we drank all the cherry brandy. Then we got down to the creme de menthe, and I drank two bottles of creme de menthe with my buddy Rich. And I can't even look at a green cocktail. I smell that mint in the drink, and I immediately get queasy. The same night, though, we're out of everything. We drank the creme de menthe, and Scotty looks over at me and goes. Should we grab a bottle of Zool? And we both at the same time were like, no. <laughs> like, no. We, like, that's how bad it was. It was to the point literally where even, even in your most like alcoholic bender moments, like, yeah, we'll drink anything, man. I don't care if it came out of the air conditioner. You know, <laughs> you look, you, you go, Zool. And you sort of immediately have a moment of sobriety. You're like, no, I've tried that before. That's, that's <laughs> the beer with chutney in it, right? Like, uh, that's one of my favorite, my favorite things is that everyone has an alcohol that they got too fucked up on that they can't touch. In, in grade 12, briefly for me, it was vodka because I got hammered on screwdrivers so much to the point that I couldn't, for, a, for probably like a good year or two, I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink orange juice because every time I tasted orange juice, it tasted like a screwdriver. I'm like, I'm tasting vodka right now. And the other one for me was Zambuca. I got, I got not no as like a, no again, I think you. it was grade 12. I got w invited to a house party. What do I buy? Oh, I don't know. I bought a whole Sam bottle Luca. of Sam Luca. What a yeah. dumb idea. Why not? Why not? Because so, it's really sweet. It tastes like shit, and it's guaranteed to make you hate it for life. I remember Sam I was, Luca. I was, it I was, burns. I was walking around the backyard, and it's so fucking sticky. I had, like, grass and dirt all stuck to my fingers. I was just a, I was a complete I mess. never stopped it, drinking you, Sam Luca, but I did stop Simpsons? putting it in my bong. <laughs> Because it's really flammable. You didn't die. Oh, I did. Wait, wait, wait. In the, in the what part of the bong? I just poured it. You know, you can put liquor in. Like, you can use really thick vodka and stuff. And you smoke the weed and... It goes through. Yeah, yeah. And then you drink the shots later and it's really horrible. But Yo, Sambuca explodes. So little small plastic bong. You know, you fill it up. Like, okay, so let's do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it literally just, it does. It just goes, it shoots fire at the top, and, and you know, the bulb kind of explodes. And that's the end of that. So I never stopped drinking Sambuga, but I stopped putting it in my bong. <laughs> Safety wow. tip, ladies and gentlemen, don't put anything that will burn in your bong as your liquid substitute to water because Smart. it will blow up in your face. Smart. Important. What, what about what you? Do you have an alcohol, uh, Trev, that you're well, off? There, what I think is the next heart the level is... Um, uh, uh, a liqueur or something that you can't drink anymore because you drank too much of it straight. Right. Like you can't eat those chocolate cherries with the cherries in the middle, like with just a, a, a little, little bit of alcohol. Those little chocolate <laughs> bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I ate 46 okay. boxes of them. <laughs> we, well, you and I drank uh, like a good amount of, I think, dry vermouth. And after that, I couldn't have martinis for a <laughs> good while because just the look at the bottle, I would be like, ooh. Like. No, dry Trev, that's okay. That's okay because my favorite martini is just basically take a, mar take a martini glass. You fill it with gin, yeah. and then you wave it in the direction of Italy. <laughs> There's no Ruth involved. It's just... <laughs> One of the things I loved about your story... So, for those of you... I don't know if everyone realizes this. If you're listening, watching... Um, we're turning this... like This podcast is going to be eventually a scripted series reenacting these stories. So, the purpose of the podcast in developing the TV show is to flush out Bob's stories. So a lot of it, when I'm listening to your stories, I'm thinking like the visuals. <laughs> I love the visual of cops showing up. They've been called to a crime scene. They know some kind of crime-ish thing has happened, but they don't know who. But then there's just a giant guy wandering around screaming, if I find you, I'll kill you, and you're bleeding. And, and they're like, like bleeding like Cain. <laughs> We're like, I know a crime happened. There's that guy. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. Hmm. Could it oh, be no, him? no, no. Getting arrested, getting arrested on the suspicion that something happened and you're probably involved is not new to me at all. Right. I mean, I, actually, you're I got stopped one time on the sidewalk. It's just randomly. I got stopped walking home by the cops, and the guy's like, get up against this fence. And I'm like, holy shit, what the fuck? I'm like, coming up from work. I'm like, up against the fence, right? And then I hear on his shoulder walkie-talkie, 
uh, six foot six black man. I'm looking for a six foot six, but not a, not a six foot six man all in black, right? And I hear the cop go, shit, behind me. He's got me handcuffed against the fence, and he's like, um, uh, yeah, you should just you should just take off there, son. It's fine. Don't worry. Uh, have a good night. And I'm like, I heard that, eh? Like, y- that's kind of weird. You guys are like, mm, that's interesting, right there. And you're like, I'm six foot eleven, bitch. Yeah, I'm a little bigger. I'm a little six, bigger than that. Six, just because I'm wearing black pants doesn't mean. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that myself. was weird. That was weird. Yeah. So yeah, getting a reading arrested at random for not committing a crime, but looking like you're the kind of guy that would. Well, Look at you. how many times do you get misidentified? N- not often. But when it happens, <laughs> it's pretty. Cr- it's like, it's dramatic. It's like, no, I'm really not that guy. <laughs> at sure all. You're looking for a six eleven guy. Are you sure? Unless it's actually you, which uh, you know. It actually, because the second somewhere. story I was going to tell tonight is similar to is, is actually about being misidentified as somebody else catastrophically. Let's do it. So, what's this one called? Uh, mutual annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was gonna say down. catastrophic misidentification, but mutual annihilation. Is that what it is? Yep. All right. So, on the I, I told you I grew up in the East End, and on Kingston Road, I spent many of my teenage days wandering back and forth, you know, being underage and drunk and all these other things. We end up in a bar, uh, right near Main and Kingston Road, middle of the afternoon. Pretty depressing time in my life. You know, I had a bunch of recently sad experience a mother had passed away and i wasn't exactly in the greatest spot so i was sort of like drinking with the intent to be like drunk till dead or drunk until you survive this one or the other right like either you emotionally figure it out or you won't and blah it was the challenge of the day it was just yeah see how you get so i'm sitting there drinking bourbon backs and beers so you know like the classic like give me a whiskey uh give me a bourbon give me a beer give me two more whiskeys give me bourbon beer Rinse, repeat, yeah. Like the song, right? Yeah, one exactly. bourbon, one, one gosh, yeah. Yeah. One beer. <laughs> Sim- similar to that, absolutely. <laughs> similar to that, but I just, you know, and out, I think man. I was drinking, I, w- I was breaking the rules. I was drinking rye and scotch, so. Uh, get the, the out! Song, song, yeah, get, get out! Get your depression out of here. But anyway, somebody in the bar thought they recognized me as somebody else. And I'd never been in there before. I mean, I'm underage. I, there's no reason I should have ever been in there before, right? And he told this older brawler, like this bar brawler guy that went to the bar all the time, that I was some dude who didn't like women. Like, I was like, was, was you know, violent with women or had a bad reputation with women. I, again, I'd never been there before. And so this dude, pretty big guy. I mean, I, at the time I was, yeah, I've always been huge, but this guy was pretty big. And he was, you know. Made it a bit big, yeah. Obviously, like, he was an older guy, more like physically blocky than me, but not my size, right? So he comes over and starts saying, so... I hear you don't like women. And I'm drinking there. And I'm like, I look over. I'm like, so I ignore the first two times. He like pushes my shoulder. Yeah. I hear you don't like women. And I'm like, are you hitting on me, man? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is going on here? I'm like, dude, I, look, I'm sorry, man. Like, I don't know you. I don't know what you heard from who. And I don't care. I've never been here before. So whatever it is that you're talking about, I don't really want to talk right now. I'm just having some drinks, man. Like, you know, that drinking thing that I'm doing. Yeah, let's not. No, you don't understand. I heard that, yeah, yeah, you heard that I'm gay or whatever. You heard some, that's awesome. Why don't you just take yourself to the bathroom? I'm fine. He's like, no. <laughs> so he pushes me half off the stool. Oh, my God. Now, I have a rule about fist fighting and physical contact, right? It's a very simple rule I think most people should have. Don't preamble. Don't push. Don't say a lot of nonsense. Don't stand there and be like, yo, this is my dick. You see my dick? Look at this. This is my dick. No, no. no. Right. If you're going to fight, do it right away and mean it. Why not? I yeah. mean, fuck that. No pussy, pussy. No waffling. No, you don't. You don't do <laughs> fighting not to win. You do fighting to win. If you're doing fighting not to win, you're With one of those guys that cries a lot and gets beat up all the time. Like that's usually what happens, right? Cheers. <laughs> so Ow, anyway, he pushed me half Ow. off the stool and cocked back his fist like he was gonna fight me. So I took the pint glass I had in my hand upside his head. I'm like, let's do this. I guess we're fighting now. It's fight time. So I hit him with this fucking pint glass and he reels back, but he doesn't go down. I'm like, oh yeah. There we go. <laughs> you terminate her. <laughs> so he comes in and throws a couple of really powerful punches, and I'm like, yeah, here we go. Like, this is actually happening now. Like, this is not kind of a fight. Like, we're fighting. You're at the bar. Like, yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes you, you, know, you kind of fight. Sometimes you kind of fight, and there's like a little bit of a couple of blows, and someone goes down, and you're like, it's over. No, this, I'm, this, this, I'm like, this is going to be a knockdown brawl, like right here in this bar. <laughs> this is KO or. <laughs> so I, yeah. I go right at him. I'm like, let's just do this, I guess, all on, right? So I take him backwards into this table, and we break through this freaking table. People are sitting there eating dinner and shit. Like, this bar <laughs> erupts. And all these local regulars who know this guy are, like, cheering and stuff. And people, it's crazy. Like, 
you know, tables are breaking. Um, the little, you know, those wooden dividers between like uh, booths. We smashed right through into the oh, hallway. You're at like a fucking James Cameron Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah, yeah. Like at this point. Where the payphone is. I hit the payphone. Payphone was bang, bang, like hanging under the payphone. You ground. hearing this? Guy's this grabbing is? me. You know, I'm giving him shots up under the ribs. He's got me in the neck in a neck choke on the ground. Get him, Donnie. And we managed to get up. And, yeah, people are still cheering, except the bar owner who's come out of the back. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it looks like, a, you know, a localized tornado has occurred, like, between, you know, bar section one and the front door. The glass doors do not live through it. We're in the street, and we're both really screwed up. And I realize I really can't fight much anymore. Like, I haven't hit a bunch of times. I've thrown the best I've got. I'm tired. Yeah, I'm Drunk. just, I'm just, I'm like deep breathing, like, <sighs> <sighs> I look over and this guy, he's, he's must be in his fifties, but he's like serious, dude, he's going, <sighs> <sighs> and we're both like blacked up and blue and like bloody and shit. And I'm like, I don't have anything else, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just straight up. I'm like, I don't, um, I just sat down on the sidewalk right where I was. I just literally almost well collapsed on the side, kind of sat down and I was like, that's enough. I don't care. And I look over, and he's sitting on the sidewalk, too, by this bus shelter. We're both sitting there. And, of course, you're, wee do, wee do in the distance. <laughs> I look over. I'm like, so nothing happened, right? We're just going to say, like, <laughs> it was an accident. And he's like, yeah, an accident. That'll do. And, you know, we light a smoke, and we're sitting there all bloody, and the cops show up. And the guy's flipping out. But all the people in the bar who, who are, like, cheering on this really ridiculous afternoon super brawl for no reason <laughs> won't say anything to the cops either. They're like, oh, we don't know. There's a couple big guys. They had an accident. And, like... <laughs> and, they're looking at, and they're looking at the bar. Like I said, table's just destroyed. Like, you know, glass front window's gone. Like, and so, but turns out Buddy Guy has some money. And so he says to the owner, he's like, look, you know, whatever, just, I'll just write it off. You know, I'll pay the damages. Just fuck off and don't talk about this. Like, you know. And he I'm just gets his kicks out of uh, accusing giants and buyers for brawl fights. Yeah, and then getting into, yeah, and then getting into, like, X-Men battles in the, you <laughs> know, in the, in, in, in the fucking bar, right? But uh, how much how much damage do you think? Yeah, you you, you honestly there. since I uh, I worked money. as a contractor carpenter for a long time. I'm and as a bouncer, you've seen yeah, I can tell you, I can tell you there was probably five to ten grand worth of damage nice. done easily in like ten minutes. And that's the thing. Well, yeah, fights, fights don't last, don't last yeah. forever. If they, right. It's not like the movies, right? Where like you go in on the battlefield the for cut. like two hours. Like that doesn't e- happen. Even, even the bar fights where they cut to this shot and then then, then they yeah, go yeah, yeah. through this room and then although you guys did kind of like carry it on well, a little bit, Bruce Lee style. It was one main room. It's just there was you know a row of these tables right next to the door with a partition behind, and we broke through that. Did anyone get thrown onto a very long table? No, and like no there was none of the no Wild West like no on the got, slippery bar. No, no got Roadhouse. Uh, no, yeah, uh, pool cues to the back. What about that? Oh, no, there's no pool, no pool cues. Table. Oh, thank God. Mm. And actually, pool cues are terrible weapons. Fall down and grab a shower they're curtain they're on your way down. No? They break too easily, and the only time they're good is after they're broken. What if you butt end people with the butt end of it? You know, it's still like better when it's broken. Right. Then it's pointy. The pint glass that you hit him with, did the pint glass shatter? Oh. or did Yeah, you I, I have a question. How yeah, the pint glass broke. broke how do I you cut my hand up like I that. I was going to say, you how don't do you not. hit a person with a pint glass without cutting yourself? You don't. You don't. Interesting. That's Unless the pint glass has a handle listening. on it, there like the ones go. in Ireland. Well, that's like why they have custom handles. Custom made for that. Good old They're Irish. They know how to <laughs> equip their pint glasses. Yeah. Like beer <laughs> steins? Our whole of, that's the whole of their business. That's just that's just dangerous. And the Germans right. are just like, oh yeah, fuck you. <laughs> like Boss, I don't even like working bigger. in bars that have glassware, let alone bars that have like big dirty beer steins. That's like you're asking for someone to get killed. You just are. You're like, no, someone's gonna get drunk and swing that shit. It's gonna happen. And three pounds of glass will smash your skull real quick. Have we talked about that? Uh, that's an interesting thing about alcohol. How many different ways uh, and su- shapes and sizes? We have little tiny glasses, and we have really big glasses, and we have like. Triangle shape. Yeah, we have we have a lot of different ways to drink stuff. What's your favorite? What's your go to? Human skulls. Human skulls, of course. <laughs> <laughs> How did I not know? No, to be honest, to be honest, I really am one of those guys. I spent too much time <laughs> camping and being outdoors and stuff like that. I drink mostly beer from the bottle or from the can or liquor from the bottle. I d- I'm not. Really, I don't even what, put my beer in the fridge okay, most of the time. Bottle? Like I'm that guy. What I really. What bottle do you like to drink your liquor out of? Because that can change. That can be. Honestly, if I'm drinking liquor, I like to drink uh, Irish whiskey. Okay, yeah, so but like for you, maybe it's different. Like I well like, like I like a Mickey. Mickey. Yeah, like for you, a 40 is probably like it. Dip- no, again, for com- comfort, that. for comfort zone. It, yeah, no, sure. But again, like I said, I've I've discovered that 26 is about the perfect walking bottle. 
if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna like try and go somewhere, a twenty six is reasonable. Anything else, and you're kind of out of your mind. Like a sixty is totally out of line. Like you have that in your jacket, and you show up somewhere, like what's that? And you're like, oh, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sixties. That's that's like a that's, co- a, bit that's like a that's like a a buddy comedy or like yeah. a like a date night. Yeah. You know? It's a bit over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a bit over the line. That's like twenty sixers, you know, like your strolling booze. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Nice long walk. Yeah. Yeah, just down the boardwalk, you Take know. A, taking the dog to the beach kind of thing. Yeah. I know you're uh, you're a flaskman. Make some noise if you're a flaskman. <laughs> a guy who carries booze around in a flask all the time. Yep. <laughs> uh, do you have it? Right. Nice. Oh, oh no. those are your glasses. I traded them in for yeah. some intelligence. He's a glassman. You totally faked me I'm out there. That's <laughs> not intelligence. That's just vision. Being able to Imagine. see things doesn't make you smarter. And that, the best part now is if I... Yeah, that's that's actually smart. Carrying then you're gum. a gumaholic, and you're going to live a lot longer than the rest of us. <laughs> Yes. And have whiter teeth. That's a different show. 39 gum and disorders. 39 pieces of gum I had this afternoon. 39 gingivitis. Chewed that shit. Uh, Ran a train on that gum. No no story I ever started with. Man, there was this day I was so gummed up. I just I just ate so much gum, and then I went out and didn't eat gum for a while. You know, like that was your weekend, bro. Not good. Too much gum. <laughs> Two packs of gum. <laughs> But if you're doing if you're doing hallucinogens though, don't don't chew like stick gum, chew bubble gum, because you'll you'll you can chew stick gum into foam. But it reconstitutes, so if you swallow it, it will stick to the inside of your esophagus. You'll get a little stringy bit. Anyway, just don't do it. Okay, trust me. I don't need to describe it to you because I've been there. <laughs> let me tell you, you spend a couple of days like you're a cat hacking up a hairball, but it's a little bit you're like. <coughs> And it won't, and it, it's gum, right? So it's not going anywhere. It just kind of slowly, eventually, you start spitting out little pink bu- And you're like, what the? What's it? Oh, gum. The time that I was, I chewed the gum to foam, then I swallowed the foam, so that I was cool. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just foam now. It won't hurt me. No, it couldn't. It's just gum. Um, Couldn't go wrong with gum, right? Now, you know, gum can be dangerous. So you watch that gum addiction, all right, sir? This episode brought to you by Rig- Coalition Against Gum. Spo- yeah, sponsored by the Gum Corporation. Next, next, next. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say next short, next short film. Thank That's you right. for not chewing. Don't don't chew gum because smoking is better for you. <laughs> this this message brought to you by Mag Mothers Against Gum. That's 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 right. excellent. That's excellent. Right. I can already see the ribbons and stuff yeah. for that. We're doing going door to door. All right, I'm gonna th- I'm gonna throw something at you. Can you tell us an experience that you had with a police horse? Like a police on a horse. Just quickly. Just amuse <laughs> us. Because I know, I just, I picture Bob and a police horse, and I'm like, I want to know when and how that went down. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Yes. I'm just More specifically, have you ever fought a police horse? <laughs> no, but I did repel one. Okay. Okay, so, again, I used to be, I used to be an anti-racist action punk rocker, did right? You all that, did you get all that? So, buzz? we, we used to go and rally and march for all kinds of, you know, like, like punk rockers against homelessness or like all this shit, right? We'd all just basically get drunk and carry picket signs around and whatever. So we went downtown during one of these these um, student strikes that turned into like riots. Oh yeah, downtown. Like so people were trash and shit. I really wasn't part of that, but I know Riot. what makes cavalry stop. And what makes cavalry stop is shifting ground. And the best way to simulate that is a bag full of golf balls. Ah. So me and my boys each had a just a small plastic bag wow this was free thought. first degree here yeah we had to figure it out <laughs> i mean <laughs> you only get ridden down once with a riding crop and you, you learn those riding crops have a steel shank in the side of them they're basically a flexi teflon bat and they the cops actually for a while in the late 90s were really serious i got i got crowd tasered one time a crowd taser is like a cannon on the back of a, of a mount it's like a big square box about this big that fires like thousands of stupid little darts out into the crowd on these yellow streamers and if two oh of them if two God. of them connect the circuits made, and you, just, oh, you, whoa! you get your your wake up call, right? Like stop and go, and it'll lay down a whole group of people in like a That's fifty great. foot area, right? That's the whole point. Holy shit! So there, for a while crowd, there, there was a lot of control. like it was during the Mike Harris, the end of the Mike Harris regime. There was a lot of like you know just <laughs> civil disorder regime. because of uh, I don't know, I have no idea actually. The politi- the politics of it really Who are are a politics. mystery to me. I just know that we were downtown a lot with picket signs, like fighting other guys over stuff. And occasionally the cops got involved and were way, way too violent about it. I mean, like, riding you down on horseback, I just thought it was unfair. 
But that's military grade weaponry on civilians. I'm like, I'm done with that. The Scottish said the same thing in Braveheart. They're like, why? Yeah. So we're like golf balls. So yeah, and they all you do have, is you they wait till they form up, and they're the going to force balls, you though. back. And you all stand in front of them, and just you just dump the golf balls on the ground in front of you and back up. Well, the golf balls bounce, and they're all together, and they bounce around all over the street in front of you, and it makes the ground look like shifting sand or moving rocks. And horses won't walk on that. So the guys are like, the guys are like, move forward, disperse, and we're like, start throwing rocks. They can't come at us. You know what I mean? And sure enough, they're you know, like, the horses start shying away and going because they won't, they don't walk over, they won't walk over the golf balls, right? You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of Return of the Jedi when the Ewoks are fighting the Imperial, Imperial forces and they have to unload. They're unloading all oh, the rocks the and, the, the chicken and the logs so that the ATDTs yeah. or whatever they are, ATATs, have to fall. I love this. Fuck, it's so good. Animators, get the golf balls. Who fucking plans their day <laughs> to be like, hmm, what if we encounter mounted horse uh, police? How are we going to take them down? Well, if you're, if you're joining, if you're joining, uh, if, you're joining uh. if you're joining in civil unrest... I, you should actually know, especially at that time, for sure there was going to be. They loved the cavalry. They used to sell that shit off all the time. It was mental. But they were like, "Yeah, we got horse. Ho- we'll have horses. We'll ride." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's the wild fucking west. Like, out, out the cavalry. We're produced. They don't even have the. Oh, we found some balls. There's still some balls on the floor. No, seriously. You used to like ride people down all the time. Crazy. And I was like, "No, that's not for that." So we talked about it just during the meeting before we went to this riot. You had meetings before we went to riots. So, you know, it's, that's how you when you're, when you're an organized dissenter. As like South Park meeting in the basement, like someone's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, you meet up at some guy's house, you bust out the beers, and you start talking. Okay, we're going, we're going, we're going to a riot in the bit. Well, it's not a riot; it's a protest, but we're going to turn it into a riot. So, what do we need? <laughs> what do we need to get out of that without like getting crowd tased or ridden down by cavalry? And I was like, golf balls. <laughs> They're cheap, and we can steal them, which we did. We go to the golf course at night and go through the drop and just grab oh golf balls. Oh, lordy. Right? <laughs> carrots would have also worked, for the record, I think. N- no, carrots, I don't lettuce. Think so. Don't horses like carrots? What got war horse? Like Whatever got war horse, that would have. Or, or did it survive? Was that a train? Okay. Need some Germans, maybe? Well, um. War horse survive? No. Did we it? are. It did, okay. We are coming to a conclusion of this episode. Just like that, folks. It just happened so fast. We're having so much fun. We've got some solid stories. Animators have a great time with that. Uh, If you listened, hopefully you were visualizing some of that stuff. Uh, Hit us up at 39DDShow on Instagram. Any parting words, parting thoughts, morals, lessons? Uh Uh-oh. He's never done this before. (laughs) If you're going... To be the protectorate of the all-night traveling flea circus, at least be sober enough to fight, okay? All cheers to that. Yes.